guys, welcome back to my channel. So every industry has their own unique set of key terms and words and vocabulary that makes no sense to the outside world, especially the fashion industry. I mean, we speak our own language basically. For example, the words pull and test and book mean something completely different to the regular world than it does in the fashion world. It might be intimidating, especially when you're first starting out and you hear people speak and it seems like the secret code. So have no fear, you know, I got you. Let's get into 10 key words that every stylist needs to know. So the first word is pull. Pulling is the act of actually getting the clothes for your project. It's another word for borrowing, basically. So you're going to go to the showroom or the store or the designer studio, wherever you're getting the clothing from, and literally pull clothes off the rack and making sure that it's in line with the mood board or the direction that the creative director gave you for that project. So every stylist is different, but basically when you're in there, you have your appointment, you go in and you're going to pull as many items as you can that match the mood board and then create the outfit later once you have everything from all of your stocks. So Depending on where you pull from, there may or may not be a fee. Now there are plenty of free showrooms out there and they have you put down a credit card or two, you know, just to safety in case you bring back things ripped or damaged or you lose them, then they'll charge you. Otherwise, it's going to be free of charge. So I like to call showrooms a fashion library. You go there, you borrow, you know, you have your card and your information down just in case, but if everything comes back in the condition that it was given, then you're good. Now some showrooms on the other hand have a pull fee or a rental fee that's a percentage of the total of everything that you borrowed but it's going to be way less than if you were to pay for everything in full right so make sure that you contact the showrooms that you're going to ahead of time so you're clear on whether or not you're going to be paying for it now the next stylist term that you need to know is book So book is basically another word for your portfolio, which is a compilation of your styling work. So back in the day, people would have these physical portfolio books that you would carry around, hence the name. But now, you know, we're living in the digital age, so your book can be your website. So make sure that you have a portfolio website that you can easily just send to potential clients. Here's a quick tip. If you have a tablet, make sure you have your portfolio link bookmarked on your home screen. So if you run into potential clients or potential gigs anywhere, you can easily just pull it up. So make sure that you have it in a convenient place that's easily accessible. So this next one might be a little bit easier to figure out, which is your kit. Your kit is where you keep all the styling tools that you're going to take with you on every job. That means your pins, your clips, your pasties, your pre-threaded needles, everything that makes your life as a stylist easier. If you want me to make a video on what goes in your kit, be sure to comment that down below. The next word is test, which is short for test shoot. A test shoot is a collaboration between a bunch of creatives, stylists, makeup artists, photographers, hair stylists, in order to build everyone's portfolio. So test shoots are typically free, that means no pay, but what you get in return are beautiful photos for your portfolio. So when you're first starting out, expect to be doing a lot of test shoots. Even if you're assisting someone, make sure that you're testing on the weekend. You know, it's important for you to build your own portfolio with your own work because you can't include assistant work or much less intern work in your portfolio. Another invaluable thing that you take away from test shoots are the people that you meet. Networking is so important, especially in the fashion industry because you hear all the time how it's all about who you know and who knows you. So always be building your network of photographers and makeup artists and hairstylists. Plus, you never know who those people might refer you to in the future. I've been referred to some of my biggest jobs by people that I met on test shoots. I mean, international campaigns, commercials, my gig for MTV. I got that from a hairstylist that I worked with on a music video once. So you just never know when those connections are going to come in handy. And it's a two-way street. If you keep building that relationship with that person, if you hear that someone's looking for a makeup artist or a hairstylist, be sure to send it to them. They'll be more than appreciative. The more you refer other people, the more they're going to think about you when they hear about opportunities for someone looking for a stylist. So it's a win-win. It's a two-way street. Help them and they'll help you. The next key term is the call sheet. 
So the call sheet is the all important document that you're gonna get before your shoot that details all the information that you need to know about that date. It includes the location, it includes everyone's contact information, their phone number, their position, their name, what time to arrive to set, which leads me to our next key term, which is call time. Now the call time is what time you're supposed to be on set, not what time you're supposed to be in the parking lot or searching around the block looking for parking. No, you're supposed to be in the building already at that call time. I live in LA where the parking is horrible. So I always make it a habit to arrive at least 10 to 15 minutes early so I can scope out the parking situation and have time to unload all the garment bags, my suitcases full of shoes and accessories and everything else, set up the rack and roll it all in by my call time. The next keyword is showroom or some people like to call them PRs, which stands for Public Relations. And showrooms are the place that you're gonna get clothes for free for your photo shoot, for your editorial, for your red carpet looks. And let me tell you why stylists are able to borrow clothes for free. So showrooms represent designers, and the designers pay a fee for their clothing to live in the showroom so they can get publicity for their brand. So it's an equal exchange. Stylists are getting the clothes for free. Designers are getting publicity. They're getting their clothing featured in magazines, featured on celebrities on red carpet. So they're getting that in exchange for them paying basically rent for their clothes. So whatever you're looking for for your project, I guarantee there's a showroom out there for you. There's showrooms for just about everything. There's showrooms that only have designer couture gowns. There's showrooms that only have jewelry. There's showrooms just for swimwear. There's showrooms that have streetwear. So it all depends on what you're looking for. That's how you determine which showroom you're gonna go to. So the way that you start building your directory of showrooms is through interning or assisting someone. So this is how you're gonna build your contacts. Most showrooms, you can't just Google them. They're not public places. So you can't just walk into them and look around and start touching the clothes. It's not a shopping center. So you have to have an appointment to even show up and they're gonna tell you ahead of time whether or not they have the, what you're looking for. So as a stylist, showrooms are your best friend. I mean, they're literally the gatekeeper to all the beautiful clothing, accessories, shoes, jewelry that you can ask for for free. Let me just emphasize that part. So make sure you stay on their good side because you do not want to go back to buying and returning everything. So at this point, you might be wondering, well, how do I get access to all these clothes and shoes for free at these showrooms? Simple, you're going to need a pull letter, which is also known as a letter of responsibility, or you might be hearing it referred to as a lore. So if you hear lore, it stands for a pull letter, which is basically you or the photographer or the team stating that you will be taking financial responsibility if anything is to go wrong or is to be damaged or lost. So that's why I always say respect the clothes. Having the pull letter makes the designer or showroom much more willing to lend you their clothes for free because if anything is to go wrong, you will be held responsible and they won't be taking a complete F. So you can get the pull letter from the photographer that you're working with on the shoot, or if you're being contracted by a magazine, you're gonna get the pull letter from the editor on official letterhead. The next key term is BTS. And no, I'm not referring to the popular K-pop band. <laughs> I'm referring to behind the scenes. So with social media, everybody wants to show what they're doing, you know, give a little sneak peek of the shoot. Thing is, you want to make sure you have the photographer's permission before you post any BTS because if you're submitting your shoot to be published in a magazine and they find out that you posted a look on the feed, magazines want exclusives. So if it's already out there in the world to see for social media, they can yank it from the issue. That's the last thing you want is for that opportunity to be just yanked from under you, you know? So make sure you ask the photographer or the producer or the director or whoever is at the head of the project before posting any behind the scenes photos on social media. Next term is jumping in. So the last thing you wanna do when the photographer is snapping away and getting all these bomb shots is jump in because you saw that the model's sleeve was uneven or you saw something that needed to be adjusted. 
you have to announce that you're going to be jumping in otherwise it kind of messes up the flow of the shoot so all you have to say is quickly i'm jumping in and the photographer is going to stop shooting and let you do your thing they will gladly pause for you because that makes less work for them to edit later on if you fix it while it's right there so whether you see a cuff needs to be rolled up or maybe a dress needs to be cinched a little tighter you know made that snatched waist look do your thing quickly so you can let the photographer go back to doing his or her thing so have you ever heard any fashion industry key terms that left you scratching your head wondering what are they even talking about? Let me know in the comments below.